testing the microphone on Jonathan Wide Angle. We are testing the microphone on Josh's wide angle. We are testing the microphone and visual of presentation for Josh's screenshot two. We are now testing the slide show presentation.
All right, welcome everybody today to the Retirement Income and Guarantee webinar, how to generate income or how retirees generate income during their retirement. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give it a few more minutes here for those who are trickling in to make their way, get comfortable, sit down. This is gonna be a presentation that go about 45 minutes if I'm doing my best with a Q&A that's about 10 minutes long. So uh, if you don't have questions, I always tell everybody stick around for a moment because normally people will ask questions that will pertain to you that maybe you didn't think of. No question you ask is right or wrong. All questions are great, great questions. And so I'm gonna jump on right after 11 o'clock and get started and uh, definitely looking forward to uh, giving you guys an education on this topic today. Final test on Wide Angle, Josh and Mike. All right, welcome to today's presentation. My name is Josh Crow, and I'm the owner and founder of SunPath Financial, a retirement and wealth management firm, also registered with the SEC as an RIA here in Newport Beach, California. We are located right off the 73 and Irvine Avenue um, next to the gas station of Chevron. So uh, welcome, uh, guys, excited to have you here. Many of you are revisiting uh, this webinar uh, series that we're doing. We have something called Retirement University that you may have been catching on to where we're speaking on the core topics of retirement. So we've got Medicare, Social Security, retirement and taxes, retirement income like today, uh, and uh, estate planning. And so the idea here is not necessarily to work in each one of those areas, for instance, if we gave you an education on Medicare, that's not something we would help you apply for. But we do have the resources available to you in order uh, to get the help that you need. Now, the idea there is that you make the right decisions. As many of the decisions you'll make for retirement, uh, you will only ever have one chance at. And so it's really about making a good decision uh, because all that end up trickling down to us as your retirement planner. Uh, and if you decide to do things on your own, well, you're going to want to make sure you do them right uh, out the gate. And so uh, today, again, we're going to be speaking on retirement and income. And this is more so not how to find a part-time job or a full-time job through retirement or while taking uh, Social Security, for instance, while you're working. This is more about how the classic approach by a financial advisor for generating income to retirees uh, is gone about. And so I'm going to give you guys a very high-level understanding of what we do, really, on a daily basis. And so 
Before we jump in, give you a little bit about the company and then myself. Um, so I started this business five years ago. Uh, I actually got into the industry with my grandfather who had started a tax business 50 years ago. So he's up on uh, about 10 times <laughs> uh, where I'm at today. Um, nonetheless, he pulled us into the business. Me and my brother, my family needed help uh, from uh, you know doing tax filings. Uh, well, not tax filings, but filing, uh, but also uh, in inputs. And then we were helping with Excel spreadsheets and just some of the, um, you know, the managerial type task uh, or the assistant type task, I should say. Uh, that led into us both uh, getting our uh, tax licenses at the age of 18. And at that time, we started to prepare individual and corporate tax returns. Now, I found an area of the tax return that I liked a little bit more, uh, which was IRAs. And so a big part of what we do here at the firm is helping people grow their assets. It's not just about how to uh, spend those assets down to retirement, but it's also making sure you preserve those assets and grow those assets through retirement. And so I really like the idea of growing assets instead of uh, the other side of that, which with taxes, you're helping people reduce their liabilities. Um, and so left, uh, you know, left the nest, uh, as they say it, and worked for a large institution in Irvine, California, great place, had mentors there for 30 plus years. I got to say it was tough getting started because there was so much, but several years later, I think it's been about nine years now in the industry of finance, um, you know, I'm starting to grasp it. <laughs> Um, so anyways, uh, at one point I decided it would make more sense. I had a knack for retirement planning, the company I worked for, they were full service. So they had PNC and life insurance and health insurance and uh, retirement planning and financial planning and anything uh, you could think of financial, they had it, even a real estate leg. And so I really had a knack for retirement planning and decided it would be a better, mar you know, for marketing and for myself to kind of just carry forward with that niche. And here we are today, five years later, still helping people into retirement. Um, you know, when we got started in the first year, I had written a book on retirement, which was called The Ultimate Guide to Retirement for Federal Employees. Um, for those of you that want a copy, you're more than welcome. Uh, you know, even if you weren't a federal employee, the advice there would still pertain to you as it covers the fundamentals of retirement. And uh, then, you know, a few short years later, we got number one production with our liaison out in Scottsdale, Arizona called Brokers Alliance for top production in the U.S., which was great. And then about a year after that, I was written up in Forbes uh, for a top 25 retirement article. Uh, you know, I'm known for doing blogs on our website and uh, those get proliferated throughout the uh, Internet. And so that was uh, caught by uh, Forbes and we were written up there, got a cool plaque and all these other things. So, you know, a few great things along the way. And then probably this year has been our, our biggest, excuse me, our uh, air conditioning's not running today and it's hot down here. Um, but uh, we actually filed for our RIA status um, and that was approved about a month ago. And so, you know, the nice thing there is it just gives us a lot more flexibility when it comes to investments for clients. And ultimately that's what we want. This is kind of our last stop uh, when it comes to uh, you know, the infrastructure of the business as it pertains to the investments for clients. Enough of that personal side. I just got back from a little trip uh, over to the Caribbean's Turks and Caicos. So I try to do one or two big trips a year um, just to clear uh, and get some headspace uh, from you know, what we do here. You can imagine working with numbers all day is a challenge. Uh, and then outside that, got a small dog and girlfriend and we tend to spend some time in the community with folks and friends. Uh, but then also here at the beach or in uh, the canyons hiking. That is my life in a nutshell. Outside of that, I'm here helping you guys, as you'd know. Um, but let's go ahead and get on to the presentation. I think I've taken enough of your time there. All right, so jumping on into it, you should see now, you should now see a presentation in the background and a small, I should be down in the right-hand corner, very small. If you're not seeing that, I would suggest you jump to Facebook or YouTube. Um, those are two uh, websites where we host today's a presentation uh, and they'll have that uh, presentation uh, in the background uh, where I'm small there in the corner. So you should be seeing that now. Um, I'm going to give it a second for you guys to, uh, to go ahead and jump on there uh, and we'll continue rolling. So let's see if we're going to pull over here. All right. It looks like we're good. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Retirement income and guarantees. First of all, there's a couple of disclosures that need to be presented to you as an RIA firm. Um, it's important to, for you guys to know that even though we work in the area of taxes, as we're planning, uh, we are not tax consultants, tax preparers, or CPAs. Um, and so we always advise to have a CPA 
uh, tax repair or somebody uh, in that field look over the plan, which is not a problem. If you need a resource, we have them. Um, I think I've said enough about the firm so you guys would know what we do here, retirement, wealth management, and tax planning. Now let's get off to what people, before they get into retirement, you know, the goal of retirement in the first place is to enjoy uh, what you work so long for, right? Some folks have been working 35, 40 plus years and they finally reached it, right? You got the proverbial golden watch and now it's off to uh, the sunset bliss of retirement. But before you can enjoy your retirement, you need to get your finances straight. Where is my little slide here? Okay. First of all, a few things that people enjoy during retirement, if they're doing things right, if they have their finances in order, what do people do in retirement with all uh, of that uh, 35 years of workings? Well, we get a variety of people. Some we have uh, want to travel, so they'll spend the next 25, 30 years traveling and doing as much as they can. Uh, that could be here locally, maybe they buy a diesel pusher and travel the country, or maybe they spend some time abroad. Um, we've got social butterflies didn't have enough time to really get to know uh, anyone uh, outside of the workplace. Uh, but you'll also have time, these individuals, to strengthen the relationships they do have. So new relationships and strengthening the ones you already have. The hobbyist, they say uh, you, you want three or four hobbies in retirement to really keep yourself satisfied and fulfilled. Otherwise, you get bored. Uh, grandparents, you're going to have grandkids you want to spend time with. They're, they're getting older, they're growing up now, and there's no better time uh, than retirement to spend uh, and get close to them. Uh, then we have the new business venture. Well, I've got clients who left their occupation of 35, 40 years and are now off doing better two, three times what they were doing when they were in the workforce for their employer, which is great. So it's, it's likely you'll fall to one of these or multiple. But where I was going earlier is in order to enjoy and to live that dream retirement, well, you must organize and manage your finances or you must hire somebody to do it for you. Okay, so uh, let's look at the topics to be covered. First of all, we're going to understand the primary retirement income sources. We will uh, help you uh, under, like look at uh, income shortfall uh, through a simple formula. So it's retirement planners. The first thing we do is we're looking at the difference between income and expenses. And if there is a shortfall, meaning there's not enough income, how do we solve that? Then we'll move into, well, there it is. Solving the shortfall, we will compare and contrast retirement saving portfolios. So uh, if you do have a shortfall, how do you solve that? How do you generate the income to overcome that? And then lastly, um, retirement income checkup, a customized retirement solution. I'll end today's presentation with an offer as we do all of our presentations. So moving right along, let's go ahead and take a look at the three-legged stool. So what is a three-legged stool? When I got started in the industry, you know, call it 10 years almost now, um, this was what I was presented with, the three-legged stool. And all it does is kind of give you a visual representation of the income sources you will depend on in retirement. And they're typically are three. The first one we have are pensions. Now, only about 35% of all retirees will collect a pension, and that's a number that's dwindling because uh, a lot of that risk has been shifted to the workforce via 401ks, right? Or they'll offer you a match, but they're pulling back on pensions to get rid of the risk. But nonetheless, 30% or so, 35% call it. Uh, and then nearly 100% of retirees, there's a very small percentage who worked for governmental agencies that will not receive a social security benefit. So very likely for you to receive a social security benefit. These are the two primary sources of retirement income. And these are great because they will pay in perpetuity for the rest of your life uh, to cover the expenses you no doubt will have ongoing. I mean, you can't get rid of all expenses, right? Even property tax is going to be there forever. Uh, and then lastly, we have one that I've left out for a moment. Could you guess what it is? If you want to guess, you're more than welcome to stick it there in the comment section to the right. We used to give out, uh, when we were doing seminars in person pre-COVID, we would give out uh, Starbucks gift cards for anybody that got the answer right. I'll come back to that in just a moment. So let's keep on moving along. Benefits of Social Security and pensions. Let's talk about why a social security benefit and a pension uh, makes sense. First of all, they are both annuities. Many people don't know that. Most people are afraid of annuities and that's okay. Um, they have a bad stigma from, from years and years ago. But social security and pensions are annuities. Um, they provide a guarantee of income for the life of a retiree. So for the rest of your life, you will continue getting that income stream from the administration 
uh, or the pension institution, and that is up until death. Now, it includes annual increases to combat, combat inflation known as COLA. Uh, that is cost of living adjustment, and this is synonymous with a raise. So during your working years, your employer, if they are nice, will provide you a raise to offset the uh, rising cost of goods and services. And on average, it's been pretty good. So over the last 10 years, uh, inflation averaged cu cumulatively uh, about 19%. Uh, 19%. But uh, on the other side, wages increased by 27%. So that's pretty good. We covered that in one of our other presentations, Retirement and Taxes. So if you want to learn more, join there. Anyhow, um, you will receive an increase to uh, your pension and Social Security, uh, for sure Social Security, and you'll need to check your pension uh, to make sure that that is true. Continuation of benefits to surviving spouse in case of death. Well, if one of you passes away, and you have Social Security benefit, um, the higher of the two will continue on to the spouse. Now, that's one of the areas uh, that many don't plan for, right? You get into retirement and you're both taking your Social Security benefits and you're covering, you know, all your expenses. Maybe there's a, a little padding there. But when somebody passes away, you only get the higher of the two. So 50% of the income is gone. Well, that could be a dilemma, right? Most people think, well, my expenses will reduce by 50%. Not true. On average, your expenses will only reduce by 15%. Okay, so your income drops by 50%, uh, but your expenses only drop by 15%. Bad place to be. Moving right along, um, but the point there was that it does continue with the pension. Let me go back on that. Uh, it really depends on what option you choose, and you need to sit with an advisor to make sure you choose the right option. There are a variety of options that are included in your pension packet, and you want to get the right one. Uh, many a time, let me just say this, we've seen big mistakes come out of this area uh, where people made decisions that are ir irreversible. And remember, when it comes to the onset of retirement, there is no better time to slow down and make the right decision because most of the decisions you make will be irreversible. You cannot go back. Um, getting back to that, uh, there's a lump sum option. And we take it all the time for clients. Why? Because when you hand that asset over to, uh, if you annuitize, if you take your pension and you take an income stream, well, the asset is now in the control of that custodian. And if you pass away, sure, there may be a benefit to your spouse, but if you both go, that asset is gone. You've lost control. Your heirs receive nothing. More on that at another time. But the idea is you want to make sure you're sitting down with an advisor who, if that decision makes sense to take the pension, like such as if they have a really high withdrawal rate, you know, you're, they're going to guarantee you eight or 9% of the principal for the rest of your life. This could be good. Most of the time it's not. It's four, you know, three and a half to four and a half percent. Uh, and it makes sense to make a, a lump sum distribution and keep hold of that asset. Moving right along to back by the full faith of the federal government, the social security uh, is. And uh, as far as pension goes, that's really to the institution. Many a time if they collapse, they can fall on the state. Um, and so to the government, uh, but you need to look at the fine print there and make sure. Moving right along, interesting facts about Social Security and pensions. So let's learn a little bit more. 40% of current retirees are solely dependent on Social Security. 40%. So about half of all retirees, 100% of their income is Social Security. Uh, that's called the PVL level, the poverty level. 60% uh, of retirees derive 40% of their income from Social Security. So the other 60%, well, 40%, ironically, happens to be generated from their Social Security benefit. So about a third of your income will come from the Social Security Administration. Now, 31% of retirees supplement Social Security with a pension. Um, so we know that because I said it's about 35. Hey, it's 31%. It's changing all the time. <laughs> Can't remember all the numbers. 10-year COLA average is 1.93%. 45-year COLA average is 366 This is a good thing. So 10 years uh, average for CPI has been uh, just around 1% and you're at about double there. Over 45 years, inflation has averaged 3% and COLA is 3.66%. And so you're up 0.66% there. Now, moving right along, the average retiree income is about $73,000 per year. Okay. All right. So let's look back at that slide from early. I left you guys all in suspense. And uh, what that is, that question mark, is 
retirement savings. So you've got IRAs and you got Roths and you got 401ks, you got SIP, uh, simple and SEP IRAs. You've got all these retirement uh, savings vehicles that you've utilized um, for what? Well, it's for income through retirement. Now, for some of you, you may not need a, you know, a supplemental income. Maybe your pension, your social security is enough to cover all of your expenses. But the great majority will uh, depend upon a portion of their retirement savings in order to supplement their pension and Social Security income. In other words, they have a shortfall. They don't have enough income from those two sources, and they have to reach out to their retirement savings. So let's take a look at how that works, right? The basic formula of retirement planning. This is pretty much what we do all day. It gets very fancy and extremely technical, but at the highest level, it is your income minus your expenses, and that will equal your shortfall. Now, your income is usually your pensions and your Social Security. That's the way you want to look at it. You don't add your assets in there. You just, whatever the secure, reliable, dependable income sources are, you add those together. So if you have passive income from real estate, you would add that here as well if you expect to receive that through retirement. You got pensions, Social Security, maybe you got royalties. Maybe you're a musician um, who's receiving royalties uh, that would be added here as well. So these secure income sources that'll last forever, minus your expenses, mortgage, insurance, taxes, uh, you know, anything that's going to last through retirement would be added here. Sustenance costs, which are food costs, which are really high throughout retirement. There's your shortfall. Now let's take a look at an example. We've got a married couple here. They're retirees, Tom and Mary. And the uh, Tom has Social Security uh, benefit equal to 2000 a month. And he's got a pension uh, that's equal to about 500 a month. So $2,500, I think it's about $30,000 per year. Mary's retirement income, on the other hand, is from Social Security is 1,500, so about 18 there. And then we've got a pension of 300, so about uh, 3,600 there. For a total monthly income between the two of them of $4,300. Okay, great, not a bad income to live on through retirement, right? Now we're gonna subtract that from their expenses, what do their expenses look like? Well, they've got a mortgage, like I said, they've got insurance, utilities, auto, sustenance, travel, and they've got miscellaneous. You always wanna uh, account for miscellaneous. And um, that's looking at about $5,300 per month. So all in, the expenses they expect to pay for the rest of their life is 5,300. So if we subtract the two, what do we come up with? Well, we come up with a shortfall and their shortfall is $1,000 per month. If we take that over a year, that is $12,000. $1,000 shortfall multiplied by 12 is a $12,000 shortfall. So the question is, how do we make up that shortfall? Where is that $12,000 gonna come from? It's not coming from pension, social security, real estate. It's not coming from royalties. We just did that math. It's gotta come from somewhere, all right? Well, that's what that third leg is for. That's what your retirement savings is for. Um, so let's look at the way as a financial advisor out here in the business now for 10 years would sit down and help solve this dilemma. You've got to come up with 12,000 and it's hard many a time. This is a struggle for folks. They can't wrap their head around a large sum of money and somehow converting that into income. So there's a few ways to do it. You're going to take this big asset and you're going to, you're going to, you're going to spin off some income from it. There's different ways to spin the income off of that vehicle, off of that investment. You can reallocate to a retirement portfolio strategy. So you'll stay in the marketplace, much like your 401k, you'd roll over to an IRA that has more options for you, better diversification. You're just gonna see a, a typically less risk and more reward there. Um, that's one step one, and then you would start an income stream. Um, you do risk associated with traditional, well, we're going to cover, excuse me, the first piece I'm going to do is walk you through some strategies. I'm going to talk about risk associated with traditional portfolio strategies, the ones that we just covered in that first uh, uh, part, and then substituting traditional methods with an annuity for guarantees. Some people like guarantees, so we cover it here. Now, let's take a look. Interest and dividends. These are the different types of strategies you can use to generate income from your retirement savings. You've got that retirement savings sitting there, and we need to figure out how to take income from it to cover your shortfall. I'm gonna be redundant today, so you guys grab it. So the first way you can do it is with interest and dividends. Now, this is old school. These are folks from the 80s and 90s. It's still a part of the plan today, um, but back then in the 80s and 90s, interest rates were you know, 10, 11, 12%. Of course, you would invest uh, for interest and dividends within uh, those vehicles for 
in to supplement your income. Because the payout was really high, you wouldn't want to go into the stock market with the monies because you're going to see less than that for a much higher risk. So you would look for interest in dividends back in the 80s and 90s. Uh, now, moving along, there's something called withdrawals total return. And that is you're investing in the stock market. And I was saying this earlier, I got ahead of myself. You're investing in the stock market. You've got a traditional portfolio, 60% equities, which are stocks. And then you've got 40% typically bonds or bond proxies. I'll explain that later. So you've got this split between the two to balance yourself out, right? Because typically when, uh, you know, the equity market's doing bad, bond market will level that out. Um, so that's one strategy. Set it up, start an income stream from it. Then we move on to uh, buckets, time-segmented investments. So this is something where uh, you will invest in a series of different buckets that go from conservative to aggressive according to when you'll need the money and the time horizon, right? Well, that's kind of the same thing. So for money that you'll need in that year to supplement yourself, this would be like in the money market or CD, something very safe, um, you know, commercial paper, short-term duration bond funds. That's gonna be in that first year, that bucket. And then you might have the second bucket uh, for income the following year. And this would be maybe a portfolio that's a little more aggressive, get out to the fifth year, and then you have, uh, you could have like a full stock or equity portfolio. And over time, what you'll do is you will uh, make each bucket more conservative in order to fit itself into the next place, into ultimately the goal of taking income from that first one. So it's, it's called a bucket, right? Just a matter of cascading waterfall of these investments to you uh, as income. Um, still a popular um, strategy with some advisors. Uh, we don't use it here much, but uh, the next one's laddering. And this is more of a bond portfolio uh, strategy where you would do something very similar to buckets, but the difference here is that the duration of the bonds you're buying um, are equal to when you'll need the income. And then, so for instance, um, you'll have maybe 10 years, right? One year bond, two year bond, three year bond, all the way up to 10 years. And you'll live off the interest of all of those. But the ones that are, you know, that, uh, that have a longer duration will pay a higher income. But you'll live off the, the income from all of them. But then as the first year bond matures, right? After a year it'll mature, it goes to the back of the line back to the 10 year position. And then you're living off the interest coming down from all of those. Um, so that's called laddering. Uh, again, it's also popular. We don't use it as much here, but if a client is really adamant about it, um, we wouldn't say no. Lastly, there are annuities. Um, for some folks, they want guarantees uh, all the way through. Uh, they don't want to deal in the stock market for whatever reason. Uh, many a time, it happens to be a situation where you have a client who might have a lot of asset, right? I mean, maybe they got a million dollars, but they have an annual income need of 60,000. Well, that's a 6% return on a million dollars. And they don't want to take the risk of doing that in the stock market. 6% might be a little challenging. Maybe there's an annuity carrier out there who would offer you 6% guarantee, rest of your life, boom, you're said and done. 6% would be hard to find, I'll tell you that right now, uh, unless you want to go with a company that's um, you know, maybe a triple B rated company. So there's these big rating companies, S and P, you know, you have, uh, there, there are three S and P standard. Uh, so it's standard and Poor's, Moody's and Fitch. And they look at companies and assess their financials. Uh, and you have, you know, a rating at the top and it works its way down as you work your way down to B rating, for instance, well, that company is going to give you a little better offer, right? Because their finances aren't as attractive. The more risk, the more reward. It's that way with, uh, investments and this world we live in here at SunPath. <laughs> um, moving right along. So annuities, you might be a person who's looking for guaranteed income. There are other annuities we use in replacement for bonds. So annuities kind of um, come in a lot of different shapes and forms, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. Now, the two we do use here most often, the two most common strategies for SunPath are withdrawals on total returns on a 60-40 split and uh, annuities, right? And sometimes a blend of those. As a matter of fact, where you see the withdrawals total return of 40% to bond, many a time because bond rates are moving up and that's bad for bonds. Um, I give the example all the time. You probably heard it if you sat down with me. If you have a bond today that's paying 3% and a bond tomorrow comes out paying 4%, who is the investor going to want to buy their bond from? They're going to want the prevailing bonds of today or tomorrow at 4%. They're not going to want your bond of 3%. So now what do you have to do? You need your income. You got to sell the bond you have to lower the value of your bond. It's $1,000, each bond is worth $1,000 typically. And now you gotta go down to 900 or $800. You're not gonna get as much for your bond now because you gotta make it as competitive as the 4% bond. 
The investor doesn't want to take your uh, bond at a lower value. So you will have to discount. Um, so that's one thing we'll do for folks. Um, but it's really these two. We will diversify your monies into the stock and bond market or bond proxy market or annuities on that bond side. Or in some cases, folks, they don't want to you know, deal with the stock market and they'll go annuities all the way. I'll tell you and give you an example of uh, a common folk we see here, two, two examples. You got a folk going back to the million dollar example. You got a folk that might have a million dollars, uh, but they also have a social security and pension benefit. And say between those two, um, they need to generate 60K a year. And their social security and their pension is gonna pay them 30,000. So they need 60 grand, but from their secure retirement income sources, social security and their pension, they're gonna get half of that 30 grand. 60 grand now turns into 30 grand. That's their shortfall from earlier. What is your shortfall? Social security pension minus your expenses. 60 grand expenses, 30K income from those sources, $30,000 shortfall. So if we think about it, the shortfall is 30,000. 30, what is that as a percentage of the million dollars? It's 3%. So there's not a lot of risk there in the market. 3% is really easy to achieve. Um, whereas as another example from earlier, you might have a client that does not have pension or social security. Maybe they were a federal employee that was non-covered, never paid social security tax, and uh, maybe they didn't have a pension neither. Many of them would, but um, let's just pretend for a moment that they don't. Well, that would be a shortfall of 60,000 per year. So on that same million dollars, how much do they need to earn per year? They need to earn 6%. That would be harder to do in the marketplace for a person living in retirement. They may not want the risk. They may say to themselves, you know what? I know I can hit seven, eight percent here, but there is a small probability that I could run out of money. I don't like that. And I need 6%, not 3%. You need three and a half, four percent easy in the market. You need six, eight, ten percent gets more challenging as the higher rate of return, as the return that you need goes up. So they may say, you know what, if we can find a great offer at 6%, go ahead and give it to me. Now, moving right along, hopefully you guys picked that up. Here is the strategy and how it works. You got the $12,000 that you'll need. Uh, and I just did a little bit of this for you guys. $12,000 was on the, in the numerator section there. Tom and Mary, that was their shortfall, right? $12,000. Now the 4% is the denominator. What is the 4%? The 4% is it's what's considered a safe withdrawal percentage with the 60-40 stock to bond portfolio. So you can pretty much get 4%. It's been proven with the Trinity theory or uh, Trinity rule by Ben Gen that you can, or Ben Gen rule, that you can um, for the rest of your life maintain a 4% return and grow that 4% with inflation so that your income increases without ever running out of money. That's the 4% rule. So the idea here is that if you divide your shortfall by 4%, it gives anybody a rough idea. Take your shortfall, your income minus your expenses, your shortfall, and divide it by 4%. What is that number? Well, that's 300,000. They would need $300,000, this client, Mary and Tom, in order to generate a consistent um, coverage of that shortfall for the rest of their life. Now, moving right along, what are the disadvantages of the withdrawals and total return strategy? There are a lot of strategies we're focusing on too the two that we use most often, withdrawals and total return and annuities, right? Or blend. First of all, you have market risk. Reduced returns increase the chance of reduced income or portfolio depletion. Again, it really depends on every, every client is so different. You got a million dollar client who's covering half their expenses, 60K a year with pensions and social security. They only have to hit 3% per year. They can achieve that very simply. On the other hand, you have a client that needs 60K a year, but has no reliable or dependable income. So that would be an issue for them. There's market risk. There's a risk that they could run out of money during retirement. The markets are going down and they're pulling income. This ac accentuates their loss. Interest rate risk. Rising rates will devalue the bond portfolio. You've got bonds in there, 60, 40, 40% 40 of bonds. Well, that can be an issue. Okay, bonds go up. We learned that a moment ago. Bond rates go up. Your bond values must go down because you need to sell at a discount to compete with those higher rates. Sequence of returns risks. Okay, what does that mean? Well, that's kind of what I was saying a moment ago. While the markets are dipping, diving, right, and you're taking withdrawals, if the market loses 10% a year and you're depending on 6%, well, technically you've removed, you, your, your capital has been depleted by 16%. <laughs> um, that's going to be hard to make up in the market, right? That sequence of returns risk. Then we have no guarantees. There is no guarantee when you're investing in the stock and bond market. Uh, you know, there are areas that are very likely 
and the strategies you can use, such as modern portfolio theory, to reduce the likeness of you suffering catastrophic loss in your portfolio. But it does not mean that they're, that the capital is guaranteed. Okay, so um, again, we do a lot here to mitigate it, and it really depends on the client. We don't want clients in annuities that have plenty of asset and tons of income. We want those assets to continue to grow, right? They're not going to do that if uh, if you're let's say let's say as a as an extreme example, the person that needs sixty grand a year is a third example. They're generating sixty grand between their pension and Social Security. Why would they then take their million dollars and invest it in a conservative manner? They would not. They would take more risk on because there's no they're not dependent on the million dollars to live off of. That's the difference um, versus somebody that's solely dependent. No guarantee. So what is an annuity? We're moving into the second strategy that we use here. It's a guarantee income with an annuity. Well, what is it? Well, first of all, uh, it's a way of converting your lifetime savings into lifetime income, like a pension and social security. There you go. Works like those two. It removes risk of capital depletion during retirement. You don't have to worry about running out of money, which is the number one fear for retirees. Um, it's been removed from the table entirely. And you got four comes in a variety, immediate, fixed, index, and variable. There's a lot of different options uh, when it comes to the annuity market. So you have to watch out. Option, uh, optional living death benefits. So you got income riders. That's the one that guarantees income forever. Uh, you got long-term care rider. Uh, you really got to look at those closely too because they can, uh, you know, they just, the, the verbiage inside some of the contracts isn't always what it seems to be. So you got to be looking close at the details or hire somebody like us who will. Got inflation rider. So as uh, the cost of goods and services are, writing, are, are rising, they'll pay, they'll lift that up, just like um, examples with Social Security and your pension, COLA. You have spousal benefit, uh, and then you'll have death benefits. So there are some cool features that can be added to these annuities. Now, why do annuities get or have a negative connotation by some of the biggest talking heads in the industry? I mean, you're looking at Ken Fisher there. And his whole premise is we'll buy you out of your annuity. We'll pay the surrender fees. Usually there's surrender fees uh, that come along with the annuities because the carrier doesn't want you just to uh, boogie out with the cash that they need in order to give you those guarantees in the first place. Uh, Susie Orman, uh, we have Dave Ramsey. Many of these uh, big talking heads don't like annuities. Well, let's find out why. First of all, and the biggest one from them, and we tr hold this true to our heart as well, conflict of interest. Uh, advisors get paid a commission to sell you an annuity. And the ones that are don't have as much many features, uh, the ones with companies that are you know poorly rated will pay the most. They'll pay the most and the advisor or agent that's uh, providing you advice might want to get paid a little more. And as a matter of fact, they might want to get paid uh, you know uh, over you know your best interest. So you just have to be careful. There's a conflict of interest. Now, for us, we have both sides. We can go commission-based uh, here, or we can do fee-based annuities, just like we do when we manage people's money in the stock market. So it doesn't matter to us. Uh, now, moving right along, high fees can lead to depletion of account-reducing inheritance. There are usually, not always, big fees associated with annuities. So watch out. Uh, next, you have immediate annuities. They provide a poor rate of return. So watch yourself when you hear the word immediate annuity. It's something that just takes your money and converts it into cash right away. Um, this, you know, this income stream for the rest of your life. A lot of folks that are in their 70s or 80s um, end up in this area. And sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. I've seen more bad than good. Uh, immediate annuities, they typically don't provide spousal or inheritance. They're going to pay the most, but your spouse is not going to receive anything and your inheritance is very unlikely for your heirs. Fixed annuities, rates are sub 3%, not adequate for income. So the bank, they sell CDs, right? You go to a bank, you say, here, take my money for three years. You drive back to the bank in three years and you pick your money up and maybe they give you two, well, one and a half to 1.75% right now from the bank, right? Three years, you show back up and your money has grown by 1.75% compounding annually. Now the insurance carriers do the same thing. But it's, they, they call it a fixed annuity, not a CD, fixed annuity. And because they don't have brick and mortar, right? You walk in a bank, it's easy to be um, you know, solicited there by, I mean, you've been to the window. <laughs> Meet our banker, right? Um, and they talk to you about CDs, a very simple transition there. But the life insurance carriers don't have that, um, that channel, right? They have us, um, you know, SunPath and its advisors to go out there and, and really try to get you guys uh, amped up about 
fixed annuity rates. But in all re reality, uh, you're going to see about 3% of the high, and that's not enough. Um, it's not bad to substitute some of your bond portfolio maybe with uh, fixed annuity, uh, but 3% typically is not enough. And we just did one uh, a few weeks back. It was a three-year, and it was 2.4%. So much better than the bank, um, but this client knew what they wanted, and they says, give me this. Some clients are like that. They direct us. <laughs> uh, anyways, variable annuities have low probability of offsetting inflation. And this gets a little tricky. Variable annuities, um, they're just they're invested in the stock market and bond market. They, there's no protection on the downside typically. But the, the problem here is that um, they just the, the likeness of them, the way that they work, I can't sit here and explain it because it's very complicated. But the likeness, if you start an income stream from a variable annuity with an income rider, the likeness for it to get a high watermark, they call it, to get above the point where you started taking income. So the market's going to go up over time with this annuity. Then you're going to take income, and that is your watermark. Well, you, in order to, typically, in order for you to get a higher income, the market has to get up and back and above where you started. Well, if you're taking income from the account and the market's diving, what is the likeliness of you ever getting back above that point to get a higher income? It's just not likely. So we, we have to be careful there. Variable annuities with income riders have low probability of inheritance. So um, again, you know, these things have really high fees, three and a half, four percent, you know, when I, I've seen. Um, so three and a half, four percent and you're taking five percent. Well, guess what? Eight, nine percent. You got to compete with consistently every single year. The market's got to hit that or beat it. Not going to happen. It's just unlikely to happen. And so their goal is to drain the account in a variable annuity with an income rider. Drain the account, drain the account. Why? Because then they keep the cash. They gave you 5%, but they're off making uh, 10, 15, 20%, whatever. Now, moving right along, fixed indexed annuities um, as best candidate for secured income. There is different types we looked at a moment ago, right? If you look down there, um, I think it's one slide back, but I showed you that there are a few different types, variables and fixed. There's one called an indexed annuity. And when we work in this space, this is the typically the space we work in. Why? There's no fee. Most index annuities, um, they're just, they're fee-less. Uh, there can be fees, but you don't have to have a fee. Greater income. No risk allows clients to pursue a higher withdrawal. What does that mean? Well, first of all, you can't lose money in a fixed index annuity. That's the guarantee. They're not guaranteeing you an income, right? Well, you can get income guaranteed from these, but we don't do income writers on a fixed annuity typically. What they do guarantee you, though, is that the money will stay level. And if the market goes up, it'll stay level. Not excluding your withdrawals, of course, but the market. If you start with the 100 grand and the market dives, uh, excuse me, let's say the market increases by 10%. Well, you go up to 110. You're now at 110. And if the market dives that following year down to, let's say, by 50%, something catastrophic like we saw in the financial crisis of 2008, well, you'd still be at the 110. You don't lose uh, to the market losses. So that is one reason we like uh, the fixed uh, index annuities without income riders. There's a high probability of inheritance. Now, as you're taking your income from this account, typically we're going to set up a withdrawal from this account that's less than what you're earning. So if the, you know, if this vehicle, investment vehicle, this fixed index annuity is making 7% per year on average, which we've seen, but you're taking 5%, say, from this to supplement your pension and Social Security, uh, well, then you're earning 2% every year. And if the market crashes, doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about that other risk, the sequence of returns risk. Again, you have to be careful because this is not for all clients. Going back to the example, you have a few different types, right? You've got the one with the million bucks who's got uh, half of their income, 60K a year, coming from um, their Social Security and pension. They may not need a fixed index annuity because they can hit 3% in the market and it's likely for their money just to really compound and really hit the highs over time. And they want that, right? Keep up with inflation and taxes and leave an inheritance. Uh, second one was the individual who uh, needs the full 60K a year. They don't have a pension or uh, Social Security. And so they need 6%. Well, this might be something for that individual. And then the last example was somebody who uh, has 60K coming from those secure sources. Um, this is unlikely to be needed by them neither. They would just go off into the uh, total return strategy. They wouldn't be looking necessarily at annuities. Um, okay, moving right along. Provide inflation protection, they do. Okay, what does that mean? Well, you can increase your annual income from the fixed indexed annuity. Uh, we do that systematically. 
And uh, that way, you don't have to worry about the rising cost of goods and services eclipsing your income. This is great. Um, I had a client I sat down with a couple days ago, and uh, you know th that individual, when we were looking at his plan, the retirement plan, he had a few different income sources. One was passive income coming from real estate. Uh, another one was from their pension, which I don't believe is going to have a COLA adjustment, although we're looking into it. And then lastly, they had Social Security. Now, the problem here is that their real estate investments, their passive income, they've been really, uh, how do I say it, uh, generous. <laughs> they've been really generous with um, you know, a friend or relative that's uh, you know currently occupying that property, and so they don't really raise uh, you know, their rents annually to offset inflation. And then in the pension, we don't assume they're going to get it. So what happens? Well, Social Security is the only thing growing at the 2.5% to keep up with their expenses. But what happens is they're looking at the plan here with me. He says, wait a second, Josh, what's happening here in these latter years when all of a sudden I'm needing more and more? My, why is my shortfall growing? The reason the shortfall is growing is because 100% of your expenses are rising by 2.5%. We, we were using 2.5%, and that's going to change very likely here soon. 2.5%, but only half your income or less is rising at 2.5%. So really, total cumulatively, which having a struggle using that word today, <laughs> um, th their income is rising by just over 1%. This is not good. This is why the shortfall increases. Um, but in a product like this, called a product, called investment vehicle, annuities are considered products typically, um, you have inflation protection where you can increase that to keep up with, like Social Security would keep up with your expenses as they're rising over time. Accumulation or income, you can go either way. So if you end up saying, you know what, I want the guarantees. I don't care if I have to give up the asset. Fine, we can do that for you. Um, otherwise, you can use the vehicle as a flexible uh, investment um, to do the things I've been talking about, to replace the bonds. You can use it as a bond proxy, uh, to spin off income. Um, there's just uh, wealth preservation or um, you know, so you know the, the market, if it dies, it won't matter. You just kind of stay where you're at. Bond proxies can be used to replace bonds in total return, providing additional liquidity and upside potential. I tend to get ahead of myself in these webinars. I apologize. That's what I was saying. You could use the fixed index annuity uh, in, to replace your bonds because, well, bonds are going to be increasing. You know, interest rates are going to be increasing. Bonds are really going to feel the, the heat here in the next 6 to 12 months, and that's probably not a place you want to have all your money or at least 40% of your portfolio. So you could use something like this uh, and to replace uh, the bonds. There are, there are other things beyond annuities, by the way, that could replace bonds, other bond proxies, and we can talk about more about that if you engage with our complimentary retirement checkup. <laughs> um, segwaying away to uh, you know, one thing we do at the end of all of our webinars, our presentations, is offer this uh, retirement checkup or investment analysis. You can get one or the other. And the idea there is to plug in your income expenses, assets, liabilities into a very sophisticated planning software. And that's going to run a report, uh, several reports really. And the idea is to help you understand, first of all, what is your shortfall going to be and how are you going to afford it? right? So solve that problem. But then we do other things. Uh, we help you stress test the plan. What if there's a premature death? Somebody dies uh, too early and half their income from Social Security is gone. I said it earlier, half of your income has gone, but um, let's say only 15% of your expenses, your expenses are only reduced by 15%. This is going to create a dilemma for you. Can the plan hold up? Long-term care, 70% chance after the age of 65 of having a long-term care need. What are you going to do about it? Um, so this is another area that we look into. We'll also uh, run uh, simulations for uh, tax, you know, just uh, rapid tax or medical cost increases. So, you know, the government's talking about, well, they're restructuring things right now. And uh, there's, a, there's a potential here in the next few years. It's not looking like it under the current Biden uh, proposal, but over the next few years that somebody in there is going to hike up taxes for those earning under 400000 and it's going to affect you, right? Um, so what does that look like? What if tax rates go back to what they were from 1930 to 1980? That 50-year span of time, tax rates were double what they are today. So what does that mean for your plan, and can your plan withstand it? So these are a few of the things. We can also um, cover, you know, stock market, um, you know, years of bear market. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, you, you're that example number two um, where you've got, 
you got to depend on you know your your million dollars to get the 60k that six percent every year but you're you want to know if it's going to be best to go with the total return strategy that we talked about earlier or something like the annuity or a blend well we can simulate that and we can show you with a, something called monte carlo what the probability is uh of you losing everything in retirement and then you can decide yourself okay i see option one two and three well this is 100 percent guaranteed these two are like 80 or 90 i think i'll go this way so that'll be uh, something that we cover in the retirement checkup. If you like access to that, let me see if uh, if I can get the Calendly link in here. I've been challenged with this over time. Uh, we have a, a little a little link that you can click on. Give me one moment here, please, and I will find it. Hopefully, you all enjoyed today's presentation. Um, you know, so one thing I'll mention uh, that I stated earlier, I'll, I'll re-mention, I guess, is we, we have created a university, and the idea is to continue educating you folks uh, on the topic of retirement. And so right now we have five core classes, and you're more than welcome to join those at any time, um, but we're going to continue to extend those, and we're going to have kind of some subclasses between uh, that get further into the details of each class. And so let me see if I can find that link. And, um, you know, it's funny. I was sitting down with my grandfather the other day. We were having, where were we at? The Golden Corral is a, a buffet up in the high desert. My folks are still up there. And, um, you know, the, 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 at the end of the day, I realized that we give these education classes not to teach people how to go off and become retirement advisors. Some of you, maybe that's why you're here. Or some of you, maybe it's a DIY, do it yourself. And you're trying to learn everything you can in order to, uh, you know, take this take this big challenge of retirement on yourself, and that's fine. But really, the reason why people come to the class and why we put all this together in the first place is to help people get awareness. Uh, and really, it's right before retirement, just getting an education enough to know that you should be speaking with a guide, a, a financial advisor, um, before you head off into the decision-making process because we've seen too many mistakes made. And so this really, what it does is it primes people uh, for just how important it is to sit down and get structured uh, for retirement uh, before you make all of those big decisions. We've seen people lose tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. I could give you an example. Uh, I won't, it's too long of a story, but if you ever ask of a client right in front of me that had no idea, pulled everything out of the 401k, a little over 600,000, and had like a $200,000 tax bill, they, they had no clue. Um, that was probably one of the bigger losses that I'd seen, but I've seen, you know, 100K here, 50K there, um, by simply checking the wrong box on their rollover, for instance. So anyhow, um, let me see if I can find our link here, and if I can't, well then, I just have to put our email in there for you guys. Callan Lee. All right. challenge today. I apologize. Um, well, let's see if I can log in here. What I'll do is I'll just put our email there. If you guys are interested in having a review, a retirement checkup, your process and everything else I mentioned earlier, you'll click on this, you'll just email us and just let us know that you'd like to start. I, I apologize, I don't have uh, that link today. So it's contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T, at sunpathfinancial.com. Sunpathfinancial.com. There we go. And just let us know that you would like to get started on your retirement plan. Other than that, if anybody has any questions, you're more than welcome to ask at this time. I don't mind opening up to a Q&A session, as I said we would do there in the beginning of the presentation. Um, so you're more than welcome to ask away at this time. And I'm going to check a few different uh, sources here to see if we've got anybody else asking. Oh, we have one on 
uh, Instagram here. Is it better to deal with a bank from Terra? Better to deal with a bank or an insurance carrier? That's a pretty sophisticated question, uh, but I'll answer it. I would say it really depends on the offer. Um, so when you're setting up for retirement or for whatever the reason is you're going to invest with a bank or an insurance carrier, usually you'll have CDs I'm assuming you're speaking about because you wouldn't be talking about savings as the rate of return there is usually sub 1%. So I'm assuming CDs. Um, and then you have fixed uh, annuities we were speaking about earlier. I'm assuming you're talking about that because you're making a comparison to the bank. Uh, and it just depends. You know, some folks, they really like having cash right down the street and ex easily accessible to them, even if it's in a CD. They want the peace of mind of knowing that the money is right there. And if they got to pay cancellation fees, they're going to run in that bank. They'll pay the fees as long as they get the cash in hand. I think you have, <laughs> if, you, if it gets to the point where you have to worry about running to the bank to get your cash, we probably have bigger problems. But I can't say it's never happened before which is why we keep some savings on hand, right? Usually six months of expenses. For most retirees, we go up to 12 months even. Just it really depends on their situation. Um, now, I would also argue that the bank typically is going to have rates that are usually much lower, uh, 75 basis points to even 1% lower than you'd get at an insurance carrier. And as long as you're working with a big insurance carrier, I mean, we're talking about some of these companies that have been around for 150 years. Um, so you have Mutual of Omaha, you have Prudential, I think 140 years at Prudential. Mutual of Omaha, uh, well over 100. I mean, you have some very large insurance institutions who have seen the wake in the economy and made it through the market cycle more than once. They've made it through the great, you know, both wars. Uh, all wars, really, and uh, even the financial crisis of 2008 or the dot-com boom of 2000. Um, you know, there were only been a handful that really took any of the TARP money coming from 2008, I think AIG. Um, typically, we don't deal with AIG uh, because we don't fi find it fair that they couldn't manage their, they could not manage their clients' assets well enough. Um, they took too much risk and therefore uh, they leaned upon, uh, well, taxpayer dollars. So anyways, the idea is that you can find big uh, and secure institutions, insurance institutions that'll give you a great offer, usually 75 basis points up to a percent, better than what the bank will pay you. So, you know, you want one and a half to 1.75% or do you want 2.4, 2.5%? Uh, really, you just need to kind of check at the offers and then ask yourself um, if you feel comfortable, what you feel more comfortable doing. I say if it's with the big institution, the offer is better go with the big institution, provided everything else is the same. Same duration, three years. Um, you know, very large company who has a good financial standing going back 100 years. I would go with the large institution. Just very rare that, uh, that they're going to get in a situation where they don't have enough capital preserve, uh, reserves in order to overcome some catastrophic event. All right, so uh, it doesn't look like any other questions today. Maybe I've confused everybody and there are no questions to be asked. <laughs> Hopefully that's not the case. If I did, you're more than welcome to uh, email us at contact at sunpathfinancial.com to get your complimentary retirement checkup or to ask us any questions you might have. Um, if you want to engage with our services, email us at that uh, same email. If you want to call us, I can put a number there as well. So that would be 949 as we're in Newport Beach, 674-5248. Um, you're going to want to press one, but I'm going to just put EXT. I'll just spell it out here for us. Extension one. It'll come straight to the sales department. And many a time I even work that phone. So if it's not uh, Tim or Seth or Lauren that answer the phone, uh, well, then uh, it could even be me. So, hey, you know, we're a boutique firm here and uh, we keep things very personal. But I think we handle or provide a, uh, a service that is well above the industry standard. Anyhow, thank you guys for joining. Uh, hope to see you in the next class, which will be two weeks from now. And uh, we'll have emails sent out from for that starting as early as tomorrow. And again, look forward to seeing you and uh, educating you guys on that topic. And uh, have a great rest of your day and, and weekend. And we'll uh, look forward to seeing you then.